Hello and welcome back. This is David from the Personal Finance Squad. We just finished up with Section 8.4 where we discussed the minimum payment, but not just the minimum payment, it was making more than the minimum payment and saw great value and how it can really drive a credit card down in terms of getting to that balance to zero. And more importantly, that means less money is going into the pockets of the credit card companies and more pocket into ours, and that we do like. But what we need to do is look a little further to make sure we sharpen the saw, to make sure we understand a couple key ground rules. Now, you may have a credit card already. Maybe you're a student, maybe you're, you're again, you're like a Jasper type or you're toward retirement, but it's important to keep in mind that it is so important, I'm gonna say that again, is to not to miss payments. Okay, so let's look at a few things here. When you have a minimum payment on a statement, it means that it must be paid in full by the due date. If not, that means a late charge may be assessed and can be no higher than $25 for a first offense and $35 if it's repeated one more time within six billing cycles. So what we're saying here is if there's a payment of $25 due, let's just say $24 is paid, that leaves a buck. Even with that dollar short, that means you will still be charged a late payment. You could be one cent short, it doesn't matter. That's how it works. But what happens is, if you miss, that also gives the credit card companies the ability to charge higher interest. So let's look at this part. When credit card payments are late for two consecutive billing cycles, the issuer has the right to raise the interest, which has no cap. Now the rate is commonly seen around 29.99%, but they could do whatever they want technically. And on top of that, let's just say if one bank is charging 34%, another one's charging 35, 37, whatever. I can guarantee you if one or two are doing it, eventually all of them are gonna collude and do the same types of things because they can't. Now I will say that at the time that you see this video, this could change depending because things just change all the time. So it's important to know these things. But again, we want to get back to the same point of don't miss a payment because these interest rates are extraordinarily high. Okay, so let me remove this a little bit. I want to now look and show you a scenario of what happens when someone does miss two payments. And we are going to use our $7,100 example that we did earlier in a video and for this chapter. So we can see, for example, that normal payment was made right here which is really based on April. And then in May, the balance reduces. Now in June, this is what's owed is $7,086.98. Let's just say, for example, the payment's due on the 21st. Payment isn't made and then on the 22nd, the credit card company can go, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tack on this $25 right here. And now on top of it, the interest is based off this right here. So it keeps shooting across, so they recalculate it again. So even though, you owe the payment, the interest is going to keep coming up on what's due because every month the interest recycles itself. So that way you're going to see much higher gains in terms of what is going to be owed. So you can see that shoot across here, we see the normal pattern and now the new total is 7175.25 and the minimum payment is now 130.98. Now all of a sudden a second payment is missed in July for example and then that means this new total is now carried over to here in July because again that wasn't paid from June right so in July it says okay now I have 7175 again and I'm gonna pop this 35 on here and that comes out to seven thousand two hundred six dollars and twenty five cents now we cycle it all the way over here again now we see a new balance of 7266 and the minimum payment has gone up if you notice here which is pretty obvious that Everything is shooting up. So go down here and just look at a couple pieces of information. But we July sixty dollars and five cents of interest to be charged. Now all of a sudden in August it is one eighty one sixty. It's a sixty seven percent increase, or a little bit over. Let's see one twenty. See one twenty one fifty five. If my math is correct, that's how much more needs to be paid on in interest just by missing a payment, just because of this interest rate right here going up to 29.99. So, it again, missing payments, not a good thing. Now you can see the other thing down here. Let's just say we get to January because this is as far as it goes in this particular chart. But from April at 71.59, the balance is only now at 70, or 707.394. I mean, that is 
it's not a lot of money. You have not a lot of gain. A lot of months have went by, and this is how things start getting uh, bad and how you get in the hole. So it's very imperative if you own a credit card, again, do not miss payments. And at least if you can make the payment, start with the minimum payment. And then we want to go higher and start making more money on payments. And we're going to get into that uh, a little further here. But, but that's the whole point. You need to get these cards down and you're paying extra interest. And if you're charging on a credit card, that means you are paying for things that you cannot afford. Okay, so that's going to do it for this section. I hope that this information has been baking into your brain the negative effects of mismanaging the credit card and using a credit card when you cannot afford to make the payments. So thanks for joining and we will see you in the next video.